We've just had the summer skirmish preview from Games Workshop, where they've talked about a few of the upcoming releases for their skirmish games, which are mostly the games we're interested in on this channel. So I'm going to go through the announcements pretty quickly and talk about what that might mean for each game overall. First up, we have Warcry and The Heart of Gur, a new box set. As expected, we have new forest team scenery and two new warbands to go along with the new setting. What's interesting with this is they have referred to it as a new edition rather than a new box, which if you've watched my Warcry video is a surprise. In the preview video, Wade did say that the existing warbands are welcome to join in the fun and that the game is still the game you know and love if you've already played Warcry. So this leads me to believe that the core rules are unchanged and the new core rulebook just has some new campaign details and backgrounds for the new setting. Adam also mentioned something similar in the preview, mostly the changes around playing in the new setting. So if you haven't started Warcry yet, this is a great time to look at the current box and see if it's something you would like before it's gone. <laughs> and if you like the, the warbands in the new box, then that would be great. Uh, an interesting detail from the background though, is that there is a crashed Seraphon void ship in the Gurf forest. The Lizardmen have spaceships apparently. For Necromunda, we have the release of the Goliath Mauler, an amazing looking bike. The key thing about this release is we're going to continue to see gang specific vehicles for the new Mad Max style Ash Waste setting for the Necromunda game. If you're an existing Necromunda player, this gives you an opportunity to expand your gang with some vehicles. I'll cover new players once I finish my intro to Necromunda video, but the short version is you get to pick between uh, starting with the Mad Max outside with vehicles or the classic Necromunda with no vehicles and in the hive. Next up, we have the Hexbane Hunters. Uh, every new team is a bonus for Warhammer on the Wolves, and this is a gorgeous looking team. What's particularly interesting with this new release is it adds more Witch Hunters into the mix. We expect to see rules for these guys in Warcry at some stage, and it could mean more Witch Hunter releases for Age of Sigmar in the future. For Blood Bowl, we have the Amazon team. Like the Norse team that recently came out, Amazons were a team of legends, along with Chaos Dwarfs, High Elves, Tomb Kings, and Vampires. Since we're getting some, we can expect to eventually get more. When the Norse team came out, they had changed slightly from the old Norse team, so we can expect something similar with the Amazons. The Amazons' general team was to have dodge everywhere. Notably, this is an all-female team, and the studio have done a great job with the paint scheme, making it really look like a Lustrian or South American team. For most of us, that's just some cool models, but for some people, that's going to be representation, and having that in the game gets more people in. And just as I'm putting this video together, we have another reveal, a star player to go along with the Amazons. This snake man has move 6, dodge, sidestep, and safe pair of hands, making him a pretty good ball carrier. His special ability is a little niche, and he has to start next to the ball carrier, and using it ends his activation, but he does take the ball, which is pretty impressive. Obviously, a lot will depend on the rest of his stats, but he's a gorgeous model, and I think this is the first time we've heard of snake man in the setting. As he plays for the Lustrian Super League, he can be taken by the Amazons or Lizardman coaches. Last up we have Kill Team and teases of what appears to be a boxed release with an Imperial Navy team versus a crew team. These aren't mainstream teams coming from 40k armies. While Krut might be a sub-faction of the Tau, the Imperial Navy is brand new. This continues the trend of Games Workshop making bespoke teams unique to Kill Team like the Void Scarred Corsairs and the Novitiates. Hopefully they keep it up as the 40k universe has a lot of exciting material untouched. We're told this and presumably the next few months of Kill Team releases are going to be set on a Space Hulk called Galodar, so we can expect to see a lot of Space Team releases. We've seen teases of scenery that suggest the box will start out uh, as the first stop for scenery for a, uh, a Space Hulk. The write-up on the Warhammer community suggests that the next few releases for Kill Team will build to an incredible modular Kill Team board. Now, back in 2019, the previous incarnation of Kill Team got Arena, which I was a big fan of. Uh, this got us on the table with a quick cardboard board and some scatter scenery. This is very much a different direction. It looks more like a Necromunda Zone Mortalis set, which is wonderfully beautiful, but really adds up cost-wise. I think it's likely that GW are about to produce a new line of Space Hulk scenery. 
That is awesome all by itself. And it may have implications for other games, specifically Necromunda. If it's in any way compatible with the existing Zone Mortalis, then it'll make a great addition to Necromunda Scenery Collection. And vice versa, the Necromunda Scenery Collection will be a great addition to the Space Hulk set. In addition, it might end up with Games Workshop adding some info for the Eye of Selene, which is the orbital above Necromunda. If they already have a full range of space scenery good to go, then it'll be a quick book uh, with some new rules and factions and we're good to go to space. Typical of GW, these previews had a lot of hype but left us waiting for more info. We knew Necromunda was getting vehicles, Underworld more warbands and Blood Bowl new teams. We still don't know what the new addition for Warcry really means and I desperately want more info on this new space hulk scenery. <laughs>